We don't usually do that many stories on Philadelphia. I mean, it's too easy. What, do you want me to come in here and go, hey, newsflash. Black crime, violence, and dysfunction is wildly out of proportion in the city of brotherly love. Yes, I'm the only one who knows that. No, everybody in Philadelphia knows that, except people who work for local TV news and who work for the local newspapers. But every once in a while, a story or a couple stories will rise up to the level past denial, past deceit, past delusion, past depression, past determination, into the realm of almost silliness. Why don't we start here with this headline. Bicyclist says teen attacked her with plastic shovel in Queen Village. Yeah, the victim says she was out running an errand. She was heading up 5th towards South Street. And when she got right here to Catherine, that's when she says she encountered a group of teens, one of them armed with a shovel. I turned and said to him, you just hit me with a plastic shovel. A neighbor recorded the seconds after the assault from a window. The attacker seen here holding a blue plastic shovel. His crew of boys and girls loitering in the middle of the street. The victim, Rachel, who didn't want to give her last name, now on the sidewalk with her bike, rattled by what had just played out on this Queen Village block. He stepped over, swang and hit me and then was standing a few feet away. And the attack unfolding just before eight Thursday evening. Several cars were seen driving by. Rachel says one driver came to her defense, prompting a yelling match with the group. One of the girls, uh, she did come up and, and ask me if I was hurt, not in a nice way, but sort of like a, I hope you're hurt. Oh, they don't look like kids who live in the neighborhood. Some residents who didn't want to go on camera say the group had been seen earlier walking in the area, yelling and hitting cars, but add this type of behavior is out of the ordinary. It's a little strange, but I guess that happens from time to time, you know, even in nice neighborhoods. A group of teens attacked and robbed a woman this spring in Society Hill, and earlier this month, a man's jaw was fractured during an attack by teens in Old City. Not just the kids in my situation, but the ones um, who may have provoked other people, you know, that they can receive some consequences. And Do these reporters know how to count? That woman was not attacked by one person. He may have been one, you know, swinging the shovel. But he was in the street with a whole bunch of fellas and lovely ladies. And every single one of them was responsible for the attack. I don't care if, you know, in Pennsylvania, that's the way the law breaks down or not. Different states react to it in different ways. But that woman was attacked by a whole bunch of fellas and lovely ladies, not just one clown with a shovel. Couldn't you tell that by the video? Police are working to track down four masked gunmen responsible for an overnight home invasion and robbery in West Philadelphia. It happened in the home above the Golden Palace Chinese restaurant on the 5800 block of Cedar Avenue just before 3 a.m. A family, including three children, were home at the time. Police say the criminals assaulted the husband and the wife before stealing several thousand dollars. And nobody thinks it's important to remind us that the, the, the people wearing masks were fellas. Nobody thinks it's important to, to know that the victims were Asians. They were living above their restaurant, above their life. Nobody thinks it's important to connect a dot or two to remind people that Asians are victims of incessant black violence, harassment, taunting, murder in Philadelphia. And when they catch somebody doing it, remember that guy they caught a few months ago? He took a, he took like a gun, he took a rifle into an Asian store. Store owner rushes in to save his family. He gets shot. He's paralyzed. They sentenced this guy, this fella, to three and a half years. Translation, 18 months. He'll be back on the streets. And here's a weird little story, only weird for... The level to which, you know, kind of like the first story, to which they try to minimize it, marginalize it, just pretend it's not really something what it really is. So a bunch of fellas are in a bar frequented by mostly by white people, young white people. The fellas get into a, one of the fellas gets into a discussion with a white girl. They say it was an argument. When we see arguments like that, that often means, I'm sorry, I'm going into the speculation area here, but I can't help it. So you can chide me if you wish. Argument usually means the, the chicky does not want anything to do with the fella, and the fella doesn't like that one bit. Anyway, he really didn't like it. So they kicked him out, him and his fellas, out. They waited outside in a car. When they saw the chick and her friends leave the bar, they pulled their car up, got out, punched her in the face, and broke her jaw. That's a little bit different than this antiseptic story 
of a broken jaw and uh, a man who broke it. A party turns into a crime scene when four women are stabbed in southwest Philadelphia. This violence unfolded early this morning, just before 1 o'clock on the 2500 block of Dewey Street. Police say a large fight broke out here between two groups of women during a house party. Four women, ranging from ages 18 to 40 years old, were stabbed. Two of the victims were taken into police custody, while the other two were taken to the hospital. Now, as bad as these stories are, are that we just looked at I don't think this video would have risen to the at least the level to get my attention had I not seen this video coming up it pretty much packs denial deceit and delusion into one tiny little two minute gap in a way that we rarely see it on such full display. Alfia is desperately hoping to avoid the violence of the past two weekends. Two weekends ago, there were 22 shootings in the city. Last weekend, there were four with a total of seven people shot. Tonight, Action News is following the Philadelphia Anti-Drug, Anti-Violence Network, and they are really trying to make a difference. Action News reporter George Solis is live at Southwest Detective Headquarters. George, you followed along tonight. What did you learn? Jim, that organization on the ground right now, their mission to stop the violence that appears to have run rampant. Their evening begins where most of ours comes to an end. If we can get through the one or two, that's our, that's our way of navigating. Each step symbolic of the direction forward they hope to move their community they say has been in crisis. Hello, hello, how are you? How are you feeling? They are Philadelphia Anti-Drug, Anti-Violence Network, or PAN for short. This group is the crisis intervention team that aims to end violence by heading it off at its source. What's up, baby? Each friendly interaction, an opportunity to reach out and foster relationships in areas where crime is rampant and where police may not get as warm a welcome. We want y'all to definitely be in attendance, man. So mm -hmm. please come on out. Let me know which day. Philadelphia police say PAN's work, especially now during this recent uptick in gun violence, has been invaluable. We can't necessarily arrest ourselves out of this, this issue, so the number one thing is to de-escalate it and stop something before it happens, and that's where PAN is really, really good at. Though the crisis teams generally go out late between Thursday and Saturday, they are a 24-hour operation. It has to be done every day. Shondell Ravel is the executive director of the Office of Violence Prevention, which oversees the program. Early Friday evening, he was out with the rest of the team in West Philly. I live in the community, you know, so this to me is personal. You know, it's not a job. This is their ground. This is their territory. So you have to respect the territory that they're inviting you to be a part of. An approach that at least some in the community say is working. If you're trying to come to the community, then be honest about what you're trying to get accomplished as far as trying to work with the people who's the locals and things of that nature. Now, PAN does run out of programs out of its outfit. The organization, by the way, is in its 30th year. Or All right, in no particular order. I loved hearing that cop saying that. We are not going to arrest our way out of this mess. Self-explanatory. And what was that fella saying in the park? When you come in here, you got to tell the truth. Well, the truth is, uh, when the when the fella, when that group, that peace group, went into the park, they're pretty much enabling them by saying, "Listen, don't okay. Try not to go around shooting anybody. If you don't, don't if you do, don't get caught." And here's the most important thing: the cop stops you. Don't talk to a cop. Please, sir. I want some more. Oh, you didn't know the peace groups were around telling oh. the fellas that? Yeah, they sure do. The biggest, one of the biggest surprises of that last clip was at the end where the, the reporter looks into the camera and said, yeah, this, report, this program has been going on for 30 years. Good Lord, if this were a television show, that thing would have been canceled 29 years, 11 months, and two weeks ago. Walking around the hood begging people not to go shooting, uh, begging fellas not to go shooting other fellas, begging fellas not to leave the hood to go into other areas where lots of white people are just sitting there like sitting ducks. Well, that really doesn't work that well, especially when you have the mayor, the district attorney, the chief of police, and other people who run that town reminding them, we're not really going to arrest you. We're just going to keep begging you not to do any more of it. Because begging a fella not to break the law and promising him you're not going to put him in jail if he does damn that never makes the black kids angry